Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest. I hope everybody has a good start to their weekend, staying productive, healthy and strong. Hi Jainil. Hi Carolina. This is a members chat class. To become a member of this channel, click the join button beside the subscribe button. If you don't see that button, you can send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com and I can give you some more help in that regard. Hi Rajveer, nice to see more of our members coming into the class. Uh, this class is a speaking part two talking about uh, band nine cue card, how to approach it, how to do that, and of course practicing for it because one of the most important um, steps towards a band nine on the speaking section and especially doing a good job on the cue card is lots of practice, okay? Uh, this is not a normal chit chat or conversation that you have in day-to-day -day life. Uh, in everyday life, we usually don't get a list of four or five questions that we have to uh, do a little mini presentation for, like uh, in part two of the speaking. Uh, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Definitely visit us there and join our premium package, get our materials for General IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com, that's generalieltshelp.com. Uh, we have lots of materials for you. Uh, welcome CB to our group of members, send me an email uh, so that I can hook you up with those exclusive videos. Hi Samuel, hi Ferdobs. Also on our websites we have free uh, speaking practice with other students. So this is our general IELTS website here with the green background. All you have to do is click that big red button to join the premium package. Uh, you get a My Student account and in there, like a, Sk a Skype or WhatsApp um, messenger, you, you can access uh, other IELTS students to practice your speaking. Same thing for the academic. It's a blue background and you click that big red button to join there and then you get access to all of the materials. So definitely check that out so that you can improve quickly and effectively. Okay, uh, again, the email is adrian at aehelp.com, new members, CB, send me an email there, say I'm a new member, uh, exclusive video level, and then I can hook you up with those exclusive videos. Okay, everyone, so right now we are looking at speaking part two, and then after this class, in about 90 minutes, we will uh, do speaking part three. Now, of course, speaking part three is connected to speaking part two, so it's a really good idea to participate in both of these classes so that you can get uh, great practice and also a very good idea of... Uh, the kinds of strategies and answers that get you these high band scores, okay? All right. So, let's get into it. Part two. So, you go to your uh, speaking interview. The speaking interview is either the day before, sometimes the day of, in rare cases, the day after your uh, sit-down exam. So, it's separate from your um, listening, reading, writing component. And then uh, when you go for your speaking, you will be uh, invited into a private room with an examiner. Of course, you will be given a very specific time. Make sure you arrive early for your speaking interview. And then uh, you will do uh, part one, which are some questions on a general topic uh, about you, getting to know you a little bit better kind of simpler questions to get you warmed up, uh, assess your fluency. And, uh, and then the examiner will say, that's the end of part one. Now we will continue uh, with part two. For part two, here's a card. They will hand you a card uh, with some questions. Here's some note paper. Here's a pen or a pencil. Uh, you will have one minute to look at the questions on the card. Think about your answers. Take notes in that time if you wish. And then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Okay, and then at this point you can say something like, okay, I'm ready. I practiced this. Okay, let them know. Why not? And then the examiner will say, your one-minute preparation time begins now. Turn over the card 
and uh, look at the questions. So you turn over the card and you look at the questions and this is the question that you get. Uh, speaking part two. Talk about, it's not task about, it's talk about a place that is good for learning. Okay, so talk about a place that is good for learning. What is this place? What can people learn there? When is the best time to use it? How can this place be even better? Okay, so some very clear questions here. You have to answer those. Okay. Um, and uh, keep in mind for part two, when you're practicing at home, that part two will basically be either a person, place, object, event, or an idea. Okay. So generally speaking, it's one of these five categories. Now, of course, having said that, uh, that could be a million and one different topics because uh, there are a lot of different kinds of questions we can ask about these five categories. However, it's important to know that each one of these kind of has a set style or a logical way to answer these. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a fan going in here and it made me sneeze. Um, all right. So each of these, for example, if you talk about a person, um, talking about a person, you want to describe briefly their appearance and then discuss their uh, personality. And of course, every time you mention personality, you want to back it up with some kind of behavior or action that shows that personality. Okay. Uh, when you talk about objects, you want to describe what they look like, their function, uh, their importance, their origin. So again, there's some set ideas that you need to discuss to basically have clear communication. Okay. Uh, you can learn about that on our website. So on our websites in the interactive course, we discuss each one of these in detail, uh, how to dis how to, um, uh, communicate about them clearly. And today, of course, we're focusing on a place. I'm, I'm sure everybody sees that. And Beck, John, Carolina, Natalie, thank you for blessing my soul <laughs> while I was sneezing there. I appreciate that. Um, so here, clearly we're talking about a place. Okay. So talk about a place that is good for learning. Uh, what is this place? What can people learn there? When is the best time to use it? How can this place be even better? All right. Fantastic. So pay careful attention. Uh, especially to this uh, topic sentence or statement here. Okay, make sure that you stay on topic. You recognize that you're talking about a place here clearly. Okay, and when you're talking about a place, members, what do you need to include? So what should you think about when you're talking about a place? And as long as you include these, it's a gr good chance that you will answer the questions on the card regardless. Okay. So Janiel says the location, the activities, the reasons, the outcomes, mm, not so much Janiel, but a couple of points are good. Okay. So when you're talking about a place, you want to talk about its location. Yeah. Yeah. Carolina, very good. It's appearance. What does it look like? Right? So you want to describe its appearance. Okay. Um, definitely you want to describe its function. Very nice, Carolina. You remembered these. Good. I guess that you're studying and uh, focusing on these parts of the course. That's good. So you want to talk about its function. You want to talk about its attendees. So people that use it, right? And you want to talk about its history. Okay. I would probably put history here. Okay. So here the order doesn't have to be exactly this. You have a little bit of flexibility when you're talking about a place. Uh, it's definitely a good idea to talk about its location first and its appearance uh, next. Um, but then history, function, and attendees. So uh, these three elements here. So this one definitely first and second. Okay. Uh, why? Because we want to create a visual image. Uh, for our listeners. So when we say, hey, yeah, okay, um, so the University of Victoria, um, which is located in the uh, 
um, northeastern part of the city um, is uh, a great place for learning. It's a large university with over 20 buildings. Um, some of the first buildings were built in 1960 and they're about four or five stories high while some of the more modern buildings like the medical science building was built uh, in 2000 and is uh, more than eight stories high. Uh, some of the older buildings are made of uh, brick and uh, concrete while the more modern buildings are made of glass and steel. So that's the University of Victoria. That's where I went to school. Um, so there I'm talking about the location of the University of Victoria and what it looks like, kind of, okay? I could talk more about that, but um, definitely one and two because that puts it into context, okay? So that puts it into context for your listener. They know, okay, I know where it is. I know what it looks like, what it's called. All right. Uh, then the history, the function, and the attendees, um, that would be third, but you have some flexibility. So, um, you know, you can say that there are over 20,000 students at the University of Victoria with uh, 2,000 uh, faculty and staff members, as well as uh, about 1,000 full time uh, research scientists. Uh, the goal of the university is to educate as well as research. So I could switch these around a little bit, the history as well. That's up to me. There's more flexibility, but definitely one and two. Okay, does that make sense? So you might talk about function first, then attendees, but you got a little bit more flexibility with these three. These two definitely talk about it first. Okay, history, yeah, you can talk about it at the end if you have more time. Okay, all right. So having said that, um, what's most important to get those high band scores, of course, is to keep these ideas in mind while focusing on the questions on the card. Okay, so as long as you keep these in mind and as long as you focus on the questions, you will do great. Okay, that's the recipe for your high band. Everybody's clear? Okay. So basically what you have to do is talk about this and then reference the questions to make sure that you haven't missed any question that's a little bit different than what you see here. All right, good. CB gets it. Nice. CB, I like how you're engaging the class. Sometimes new members are shy and they don't engage the class, but you're doing that, which is fantastic. Okay. All right, um, so we know it's a place. It's a place of learning or it's a place that's good for learning. Um, and um, what should I re remember here? So my next step, what's my next step? Okay, tell me that. What do I do next? So step one, I read the question carefully. Step two, identified that it's a location or uh, it's a place. Um, and what's my next step? It's my step three. What do I do after I have this? Yeah, so Carolina says, think of a couple different choices and choose the easiest and unique one, okay? So uh, think of two to three places. Uh, choose the one that you can talk about easily and it's relatively unique, okay? And um, I've got some interesting news for you, actually, members. Uh, I've started doing a new course um, just the other day, which uh, is offered by British Council, of course, the same group that uh, administers the IELTS exam. And I'm doing a course with British Council um, to be a certified British Council agent. So in the next uh, couple months, I'll have this certification. And with that, um, I get a lot of information about what is required to study uh, in the UK, what is required for students to enter universities, and so on. The reason I'm mentioning that right now, actually, is because what I found interesting doing this um, um, British Council Certified Agent course is at every point in the course, British Council puts emphasis on critical thinking and original ideas, okay? 
So uh, don't be surprised that the IELTS is very similar, okay? Um, it's inter I saw in the course in a couple of places, and this is an IELTS, it's a, it's a different course, it's connected. We discuss IELTS as professionals in the course, as uh, teachers and so on. Uh, but uh, what's interesting is it's emphasized that it's very important to not just copy uh, what um, the internet or what teachers are saying as a standard essay or a standard response, but to have original uh, communication, original ideas. Okay, so super important uh, to think about that as IELTS candidates as well. Okay, if you're just copying some sentences from the internet, you're not going to do very well. Okay, so don't do that. All right, it even says this in the British Council agent <laughs> course. Okay, all right, so step three, uh, think of two to three places, choose one that you can talk about easily and it's relatively unique, okay? All right, so, yeah, and I'll give you some more information as I get some more uh, knowledge as well about uh, what and how through this course, for sure. Okay, uh, so let's talk about some places here, all right? Um, Ferdov says, universities, kindergarten, school, at home, tutors. Okay, uh, focus your ideas, Ferdov. So don't try to list too many places. Okay, so um, university is one, sure. Janiel says, football academy. Okay. Uh, Carolina, very nice. That's kind of what I was looking for. Okay, London. Tint Library, very nice. Okay. Uh, Sammy says Medical College. <clears throat> All right. And uh, Secure Now says Museum. All right. Good. So um, to move things along here, uh, this is a good first step to think of university football academy is even better. London Tint Library, that's my favorite one so far. So good job, uh, Carolina. Medical College, that's okay as well. Um, again, what you want to do is to be specific. Okay. So library would probably be a popular choice on its own. But talking about the London Tint Library, which is much more specific, is a much better choice. Okay. Uh, if you talk about medical college, it would be wise to make it a specific medical college. So Harvard Medical College. Okay. Or New Delhi Medical College. Okay. If you're talking about a football academy, make it specific. The Manchester Football Academy. If you're talking about university, uh, make it specific, like the University of Victoria. Okay, as I uh, said before. Okay, so okay. Um, Harvard Medical College, the Louvre um, Museum, Louvre Museum, okay? So uh, you want to be specific, right? Now, being specific, you're going to be in a much, much, much better situation to talk for two minutes because, okay, so keep this in mind here, students, okay? By being specific, you are in a much better position to get a high band score because you will have more information at your disposal you will be able to speak in more detail. You will also be able to provide more visual and real 
context and you will have a unique response which will stand out from the rest. Okay, so that's the reason that you want to be uh, more specific. Does that make sense? So does it make sense uh, why you want to be specific? Okay. If you just talk about a library or if you just talk about a university or if you just talk about a medical college or a museum, any museum, it's going to be much more vague and much more general. And it's not going to have nearly the effect uh, that it will if you talk about a specific place. Okay. Um, so now that we have that, uh, let's, um, let's choose the London Tint Library, okay? Again, the IELTS is not about the truth. You can make up information, okay? Uh, and it's easier to make up information when you have a specific idea. So for today, I'm just going to choose one here. Um, let's do the London Tint Library, which I'm actually not familiar with myself, but, and maybe many of you aren't either, which is fine. It's totally okay. Uh, we can make up information, right? So, useful notes. Okay. So, um, give me some useful notes. Samuel, I definitely wouldn't do an online education um, site like Udemy um, because it's a virtual location. And I think it would be awkward. And uh, you're probably going to set yourself up for a much more difficult situation for part three as well. Um, okay, so Carolina said she made that up, so I'm going to just <laughs> change it to London Central Library. Tint is kind of weird, but sure. Uh, London Central Library. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was actually a place, Carolina, but fine. Um, let's call it the London Central Library. London City Library, maybe. I don't know what they call it there in London. Uh, but let's just make it up. It's kind of fun because none of us really know what it is. It's a fictitious library that we've just come up with. Um, let's create some useful notes here. All right. So not some ideas that you... Okay, very good, Beck John. So uh, on 16th East, East Street... Downtown London. Sure. Okay, we're just making it up. Hey, I'm not a Londoner. In fact, I've never been to England. I'm Canadian. England is just... I Actually, I've been at the airport, Heathrow. So, um, All right. Jainil says it's Baker Street. Sure, okay, so we got the location. Give me some other... Okay, so Samuel says five-story building. Okay. Uh, built in 1718. Sure. Okay, let's keep going. Give me some more useful notes. And keep in, when you're doing your useful notes, uh, keep in mind the order of uh, the details. So remember, we said location. Then we said uh, what it looks like, okay? Okay, so red and white on the outside, sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, Jai Neal says it's... Uh, 200,000 or it's 150,000 square foot space. Sure. Okay, good. Brick and mortar, Natalie, very good. Sure. Okay, now just like with people, um, don't get too stuck on the appearance. Um, Samuel says gothic style, that's nice. I like that vocabulary. Sure. Okay, so enough about the appearance. We don't need too, too much about the appearance. Jainia, we already had a date suggestion. Uh, so let's go on to the rest now, okay? 
so function attendees think about the questions. Okay. So Beck John says modern facilities. Okay. Okay, give me some more information. So modern facilities, Wi-Fi, computers. What else? Think about libraries. Think about your university library. Try to be dynamic. Think outside the box. Okay. Um, course learning. Sure. So you can do course learning there as well. Why not? Uh, workshops. Okay. Arts and crafts, the chemistry, good. So you're coming up with these fast computer courses, uh, storytelling, sure. Meeting rooms, right? Group study, okay. Uh, Rajvir, borrowing books, yeah. Let's not forget about books, it is a library. All right. Uh, who are the people that work in libraries that help you? Okay. Samuel says it's open 24 hours. Why not? We're making it up, right? Twenty four seven accessibility. Um, students, professors, librarian. That's right, Moni. Thank you. So librarians. Okay. All right. Uh, very good. Uh, now, don't forget about the questions, right? So uh, you only have one minute. So keep in mind, students, that you only have one minute. So you have to be quick at thinking, quick at writing down the useful notes. Uh, you can do this many notes in one minute as long as you practice and you know what's going on. Uh, don't forget about the questions, okay? So uh, what is this place? We have some notes for that, which is great. Uh, what can people learn there? We have some notes for that, so that's good. Uh, now think about when is the best time to use it and how can this be even better? So give me a couple of notes for these questions, okay? Don't forget to take notes for the questions, especially for the last couple, okay? So you want to get those in there. So when is the best time to use it? Just make it up. You'll need a reason. And how can this place be even better? Okay, so here I'm just going to give you a note, okay, so don't forget to write down at least one note for each of the last two questions on the card, okay, it's very important, okay, so when's the best time to use it? So secure now says any time other than weekends. Uh, secure now, instead of saying when not to, say when to. So during weekdays, early morning. Yeah, so. Okay, weekdays, 6 a.m., no people. Or 11 p.m. late, no people, and quiet. Okay, good. All right, so that's fine. Okay, uh, and don't forget the last question. How could this place be even better? Okay. So give me some ideas for that. Make it up. Again, it doesn't have to be the truth. I mean, the whole library is fictitious. We're just making it up. But it's still better than just any old library. Okay, so Carolina says free English classes. So free lectures, free English classes, sure. Uh, more science fiction books, sure. Shahtaj, that's good. Shah Taj, yeah, Bano, that's good. Why not? More sci-fi books. 
Okay, uh, professional seminars. That's lots. Okay, great. I love how many of our members that are sitting in these classes regularly are becoming much faster thinkers. And I'm assuming that you're starting to think in English as well. Uh, and you're not translating as much, which is really nice. I can guess that just by the speed that you're responding to my questions, which is really good. Okay, so uh, step four is, as everybody knows, get your first sentence ready. Okay, so give me your first sentence here, students. Okay. So if we look at this question, again, when you think about your first sentence, think about the question, especially this part of the question here. So talk about a place that is good for learning, okay? You want to include this in your first sentence and you want to be very specific so that you are on topic right away and the examiner can see that you're not just using some kind of memorized uh, response system, but you're being original, okay? Uh, Shaktaj, you don't have to say what you're going to talk about today because you are going to talk about that today. You're in the exam. You're going to do it, okay? So more direct, okay? Shaktaj, that's what I mean. British Council wants really direct, um, original communication, okay? So uh, Samuel says, the London Central Library for me is the best, best place to study and refer to research. Uh, Samuel, it's good, but use the word learning, okay? So in your first sentence, just really use this topic sentence in your response. So S Samuel, the London Central Library for me is an excellent place for learning. That's it, that's your band nine, okay? All right, CB says, there's one place suggested by my friend to visit. It's the London Central Library. CB, that's exactly what you don't want to do because now you're talking to me about a place that you should visit. No, no, no. It's a place that's good for learning, okay? You want to include this, okay? So don't overcomplicate it. Simple is beautiful here, all right? Yeah, Samuel, exactly. So the London Central Library, for me... Uh, is the best place for learning. Great, okay. Hassan says, I have been in the London Central Library for ages and it's the best place that I can recommend for everyone who wants to study and learn uh, new knowledge, okay. Hassan, stay away from things at all costs. I know it's okay in this case, but new knowledge, okay, or new information. Um, Shaktaj, correction, the London Central Library has a huge collection of books and services, which is a great place for learning. Much better. Okay, uh, Shaktaj, you see how that's just so much better than, uh, I think what you wrote first there? Yeah. So, Shaktaj, that's what you want to start with. That should be your first sentence. See how it's just so much better for this cue card? Your second attempt is a band nine. Your first attempt is a band six. That's the difference. It's a three band difference, Shaktaj. Okay. All right. Um, and if I want to move from general to specific, I can do it like this uh, so that I'm still original. Okay. So arguably, one of the best places for learning is a library and to be specific the London Central Library is outstanding okay so I can do it like that as well so I can show the examiner of like hey okay we can I can say libraries in general but I'm going to be more specific here and focus on one library to give you an even better idea, to give you an even more specific idea. Okay, yeah, all right. So we want to be specific. So notice how here I'm not saying there are many great places for learning or today I'm going to talk about or thank you for giving me this opportunity. None of that, okay? I go directly for a specific type of place and then cut right into a very specific sample of that place. So arguably 
one of the best places for learning is a library, and to be specific, the London Central Library is outstanding. Okay. Um, arguably, um, it's because uh, a lot of people would agree. So when you have an idea, Samuel, where um, a lot of people would agree with you, you can use this kind of leading expression, arguably, right? Because many people would argue that comment, okay? All right. Um, all right, so good. I, I get it. I guess everybody's kind of on the same page now, and it looks like we all have a good idea. So now we want to keep going, okay? So you can use your notes, and I want you to add sentences. Uh, you're going to build this. I'm going to guide you. So go for it, members. Uh, describe a little bit. Of course, think about what we talked about. So I'm not going to give you more information. You should remember, okay? You want to build this script in your head and you should with practice know how to build that script. So the IELTS examiner says, okay, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking and you start. Arguably, one of the best places for learning is a library and to be specific, the London Central Library is outstanding for this purpose. Okay, Rajveer says, it is situated on the corner of 6th Avenue East and Baker Street in the heart of London. Okay, sure. Uh, I just took a little bit of what you said there, Rajveer, and, and tuned it. Uh, so Rajveer says it is situated on 6th East Lane, downtown London, which is in the heart of the city. Okay. Don't repeat the word London, Rajveer. Otherwise, very good. Uh, Ferdov says it is located near Buckingham Palace, 500 meters to the east uh, on Manchester Street, 18. Very good, Ferdovs. Uh, Beg John says this place is located in the downtown of London on 16th East Street near the University of Manchester. Perfect. I, we're all just making it up. Nobody cares, even if the examiner is from London and they're like, what are you talking about, University of Manchester? They'll go, okay, this student's being creative and you're using some good English, so that's totally fine, okay? Um, you can absolutely get a band nine, even if you are completely just making it up, as long as it's good English, all right? Samuel says it is a five-story stone building located at 221B London and was built in 1718, making it one of the oldest libraries in the UK. I, yeah, again, it doesn't matter if it's the truth or not, Samuel. I think there are much older libraries, I would guess, in London. But, um, but yeah, sure, it contains a, a wide range of books uh, from anthropology uh, to zoology. Mm, okay, yeah, it's good. All right, some nice sentences there, students, nice sentences. Again, uh, remember everyone that this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak, okay, speak and repeat. Carolina, keep going, speak and repeat, if you're still here. All right. Sibby says, the library is located in 8th Avenue Market in the heart of London. It's a two-story building and easily noticeable from its gothic motif. Sure, what we have in our notes there. It is established uh, by the University of London in 1927. It's located at 122 Baker Street in the heart of the city. I love how you are all being so creative. It's fantastic. Um, so... The library uh, was built somewhere around the beginning of the 18th century. It is mostly made of stone with a distinct gothic motif
it is about five or six stories in height and covers roughly a hundred thousand or fifty thousand uh, square foot space okay sure all right Hassan says it is a magnificent building designed in postmodern architectural style in the 1950s the facade uh, is made from old red brick and concrete uh, with uh, black and white lines sure Hassan it's really nice description again I'm just taking any one of those uh, that you're writing and then kind of creating that visual um, image for my examiner okay so far so good let's just practice a bit of speaking here so repeat after me and then we'll go on for the next part so arguably one of the best places for learning is a library and to be specific the london central library is outstanding it is situated on the corner of sixth avenue east and baker street in the heart of london the library was built somewhere around the beginning of the 18th century it's made mostly of stone with a distinct gothic motif it's about five or six stories in height and covers roughly a 50,000 square foot space okay so far so good uh, now let's keep going so give me some sentences to write after this okay give me some more sentences to write after this all right Samuel says, people of all ages, uh, from toddlers to the elderly, uh, use this space, including scientists and researchers, uh, to gain knowledge from the millions of books that can be found in the library. Okay. Sammy says, it's useful for learning and uh, upgrading uh, upgrading uh, is more for like um, technology, Sammy. Upgrading myself, we sometimes use that as an expression, but it's slightly awkward, okay? So it's useful for learning and getting a lot of knowledge through books um, and having a beautiful and cool atmosphere. Uh, around 200 people can be seated on each floor, okay? Uh, Samuel says, people of all ages from third grade children to the elderly, okay, that was what you put there. You just copied it back in. Uh, CB says it stores a variety of publications and books that ranges from almost all genres. Yeah, very good, CB. So uh, the uh, library houses over a million books. That range from physics to anthropology and even romance covering almost all genres that readers may be interested in. Okay, good. All right, CB. Uh, Beck John says, the main uh, attendees of this place are various, such as students, scientists, locals, and children. Okay. Um, there are people from all walks of life who use the library from toddlers who are there for story time to elderly uh, researching who are researching their heritage to secrets of a long life. 
All right, sure, being creative, very nice. Okay, hi Zob, welcome into the class. Secure now says it is ideal for all generations from X to Z having books on academics, politics, art, fiction, culture, business in different languages. Very good, yeah. So uh, there are books in many languages. So people from different parts of the world and cultures can gain knowledge. Okay, good. So we're doing a good job here uh, so far. All right. Hassan says, in the reception, there's a huge statue of the king. Uh, there are two uh, lines of rooms to study. At the end, there is a gigantic library that includes thousands of books for all genres. All right, very good, Hassan. Again, focus in on the questions, right? Um, Sammy says the library is open 24 seven with the latest computer lab, which is useful for browsing information online. The conference hall is more than enough to have, uh, gatherings for around 500 people comfortably. Very nicely put Sammy. Very good. Okay. Um, the library is open 24 seven, which makes it extremely convenient for people. In addition to the books, there are modern computer labs where the wealth of online information is available at the touch of a fingertip. Furthermore, the library has study and meeting rooms where people can acquire knowledge through group learning. Okay, we're keeping the topic in mind, right? Okay, Rajveer says the best time to go to this library is either early in the mornings, about 6 a.m., when there are a few people, just 10 to 15 people. Okay, very good, Rajveer. So the best time to visit the library for learning is weekdays at 6 a.m. when there are very few people, just a dozen or so on each floor. Okay, very good. Beck John says, although this public uh, facility uh, operates 24-7, the best time to go and learn there is in the morning around 6 a.m. and late at around 11 p.m. Very nice. Samuel says, the library recently has added a new technology center where people can access the digital versions of books and also browse the web. Excellent. Okay. Um, a couple of ways that the library could be even better is if it offered free English courses for international students and residents to become even more fluent and better communicators. Also, as a lover of science fiction novels, I would love to see uh, more choices and titles in this genre. Okay, fantastic everyone. Beautiful fluency. I love how everybody was able to uh, think of so many great ideas. Now, of course, you always want to check and make sure that you've covered all of the questions 
and you haven't missed any questions on the card, that's very, very important here, okay? So talk about a place that is good for learning. What is this place? What can people learn there? When is the best time to use it? How can this place be even better? I think we did a good job there, okay? So I think that we've covered all of these questions and we're feeling great and confident about our answer and ready for part three. So let's go through our response one more time. This is speaking. For those of you who are confident in your speaking and fluency and your listening skills, try to say this without reading. If you need a little bit of help, then read. But otherwise, try to say this without reading. Okay? So let's go from the top. Here we go. Arguably, one of the best places for learning is a library, and to be specific, the London Central Library is outstanding. It is situated on the corner of 6th Avenue East and Baker Street in the heart of London. The library was built somewhere around the beginning of the 18th century. It's mostly made of stone with a distinct Gothic motif, and it has about five or six stories. Uh, it roughly covers 50,000 square foot space. The library houses over a million books that range from physics to anthropology and even romance, covering almost all genres that readers can be interested in. There are people from all walks of life who use the library, from toddlers who are there for story time to elderly who are researching their heritage and the secrets of a long life. There are books in many languages, so people from different parts of the world and cultures can gain knowledge. The library is open 24-7, which makes it extremely convenient for students and learners. In addition to the books, there are modern computer labs where the wealth of online information is available at the touch of a fingertip. Furthermore, the library has a study room and meeting rooms where people can acquire knowledge through group learning. The best time to visit the library, I would say, is probably in the weekdays at around 6 a.m. early in the morning or 11 p.m. late at night when there are just a few people, maybe only around a dozen or so on each floor. A couple of ways that the library could be even better is that if, uh, if it offered some free English courses for international students and residents to become even more fluent and better communicators. Also, as a lover of science fiction novels, I would love to see some more choices and titles in this genre for their paperback books. All right, everyone. So uh, practice that. The video will be up on the channel, so you can go over that a couple of times and uh, practice your fluency. You've done a fantastic job. Coming up in 30 minutes, part three, which will be questions related to this topic of part three two okay so that's what we're doing all right you're very welcome sammy parmar natalie welcome hopefully i'll see all of you in 30 minutes for part three for these uh, follow-up questions okay uh, for everybody who would like to access all of our videos and products in hd uh, you can do that at aehelp.com for academic ielts and glshelp.com for general outs. I'm Adrian, signing out from Budapest for a brief half hour, and I'll be back soon. Bye for now.